Shirley MacLaine, a highly accomplished actress, marked her debut in The Trouble with Harry in 1955 and continues to be active in the film industry, with releases in 2022 and more projects on the horizon. Notably, she's approaching the age of 90 and still gracing the screen with her talent. However, it's essential to acknowledge that her relationships with co-stars weren't always smooth sailing. In fact, there were instances where she openly expressed dislike for some co-stars, leading to tensions on the set. One co-star even went as far as labeling her the most obnoxious actor I've ever worked with. Curious to know who these co-stars are? Stay tuned as we reveal the co-star Shirley MacLaine hated the most. In 1970, the cinematic landscape was graced by the release of the now classic Western film Two Mules for Sister Sarah. Directed by the renowned Don Siegel, the film featured one of Hollywood's most beloved leading men of that era, Clint Eastwood. Interestingly, the initial choice for the co-starring role alongside Eastwood was the iconic Elizabeth Taylor. The plan was for Taylor to portray the titular character, Sister Sarah. However, Despite her star status, Elizabeth Taylor expressed no interest in the project and declined the opportunity. Faced with the challenge of finding a replacement actress, the filmmakers needed someone with the charisma and drawing power to engage audiences, even if they couldn't match the star power of Elizabeth Taylor. Shirley MacLaine, an accomplished actress, emerged as a fitting choice for the co-starring role in Two Mules for Sister Sarah. Her successful debut in The Trouble with Harry marked the beginning of a string of hits in her career. As 1970 approached, she was on the brink of creating another cinematic triumph, thanks in part to her previous success in the film Sweet Charity, which caught the attention of the studio. Interestingly, despite the studio's endorsement, both Don Siegel and Clint Eastwood, the director and leading man, respectively, were initially hesitant about casting Shirley MacLaine. Their reservations were based on concerns about her complexion, which they believed might not translate well on screen, especially for the character of Sister Sarah. Once the collaboration began, their working relationship, as described by them, was less than amicable. Don Siegel, the director of Two Mules for Sister Sarah, held reservations about Shirley MacLaine, perceiving her as not traditionally feminine and occasionally too assertive, making her challenging to work with he found it challenging to develop an affectionate rapport with her. Moreover, Shirley MacLaine faced challenges during the filming in the heat of Mexico, adding to the strain of the working relationship. The feeling of discord was mutual, as Shirley MacLaine didn't enjoy collaborating with Don Siegel. Many anticipated that she might identify Clint Eastwood as the co-star she despised the most. Surprisingly, Clint Eastwood wasn't prominently mentioned in her memoirs, leading to speculations that she harbored strong negative feelings towards him. However, in subsequent years, Shirley MacLaine expressed admiration for Clint Eastwood, praising his tough attitude both on and off screen. In essence, Clint Eastwood did not turn out to be the co-star she hated the most. So, who held that position? Before divulging that, let's explore a different instance of conflict, not with a co-star, but with a host. Actors and actresses often navigate the terrain of talk show appearances, where they not only promote their latest projects, but also find themselves delving into personal aspects of their lives and beliefs. Shirley MacLaine, renowned for her acting career and spiritual inclinations, was no exception to such talk show encounters. One notable incident transpired during her appearance on The Late Show with Dave Letterman. In October 1988, McLean graced the late-night talk show to discuss her film Madame Susatska. However, the trajectory of the conversation deviated unexpectedly as host Dave Letterman became more intrigued by McLean's profound belief in reincarnation. Rather than centering the discussion around the film, Letterman found amusement in exploring this facet of her personal philosophy, turning it into a point of jest throughout the interview. In the midst of an interview, he inquired about the possibility of having lived past lives, a question that irked her. 
Shirley MacLaine responded with a playful remark, suggesting that he might have accumulated some bad karma along the way. Undeterred, he continued the banter, jesting about the diverse careers and lifestyles MacLaine might have experienced in her alleged past lives, ranging from a monk to a dancer in a harem, of all things. Despite her attempts to bring a more serious tone to the conversation by explaining that her belief in reincarnation stemmed from spending time in Asia, where such beliefs are more prevalent, he persisted, seemingly amused and intent on teasing her for her perspectives. Even during the commercial break, McLean reportedly communicated her reluctance to delve into this topic further in the second half of the interview. However, he persisted in pushing the subject, prompting McLean to cite Cher's unfavorable experience on the show in frustration. The unexpected turn of Shirley McLean's interview on The Late Show with Dave Letterman took a more intriguing twist when she playfully quipped, Maybe Cher was right. Maybe you are in... Leaving the rest to the audience's imagination. This impromptu moment injected a dose of awkwardness into the atmosphere, prompting Letterman to inquire whether McLean was genuinely upset or simply engaging in theatrics. In response, McLean challenged Letterman to discern the authenticity of her emotions. As the tension lingered, Letterman eventually concluded the interview, and after the cameras stopped rolling, Shirley McLean made a swift exit, choosing not to return after the commercial break. The aftermath of the incident left both parties with a sense of discomfort, making it challenging for them to move past the unexpected turn the interview had taken. In reflecting on the encounter, McLean's sentiments hinted at the unpleasantness she experienced with Letterman during the interview. The tension in the air seemingly left a lasting impact on their dynamic, emphasizing the challenges that can arise when a talk show guest and host find themselves at odds. However, the mystery of the unspoken words and the lingering awkwardness only fooled speculation about the true nature of their strained interaction. Now, the revelation of McLean's least favorite co-star remains in suspense, inviting further exploration into the complexities of her relationships within the entertainment industry. The obnoxious co-star. While Hollywood is no stranger to rumors of onset tensions among co-stars, the clash between Shirley MacLaine and Anthony Hopkins in the 1980 film A Change of Seasons stood out for its candidness. Both actors openly expressed their unfavorable opinions of each other, offering a rare glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the film. A Change of Seasons, unfortunately, didn't fare well both commercially and critically, which may have contributed to the negative atmosphere on set. As McLean and Hopkins navigated through the challenges of the film, their mutual dissatisfaction became evident. The movie's lackluster reception might have added an extra layer of disappointment, intensifying the candid remarks that follow it. In the realm of Hollywood feuds, McLean and Hopkins didn't shy away from sharing their unfiltered thoughts about each other. As their professional collaboration turned sour, it sparked public curiosity about the specifics of their disagreements and the impact it had on the production of A Change of Seasons. Their movie was a flop. A Change of Seasons, the 1980 film starring Shirley MacLaine and Anthony Hopkins, unfolds a narrative centered around a married couple navigating the complexities of infidelity. Both characters engage in extramarital affairs, leading to a weekend getaway on a ski trip that adds further layers of tension and drama to the storyline. Unfortunately, the film failed to captivate audiences and critics alike, earning it the dubious distinction of receiving three nominations at the inaugural Razzie Awards. The Razzies, or Golden Raspberry Awards, celebrate, or perhaps mock, the cinematic achievements deemed the worst of the year. In the case of A Change of Seasons, the nominations included Worst Actor for Anthony Hopkins, Worst Song, and Worst Screenplay. The acknowledgement from the Razzie Awards further fueled the disappointment surrounding the film, the unfavorable reception both commercially and critically, coupled with the strained on-set relationship between McLean and Hopkins, painted a challenging picture of the production. Hopkins called McLean obnoxious. Years after the release of A Change of Seasons, 
Anthony Hopkins made headlines with a candid and rather unfiltered assessment of his experience working alongside Shirley MacLaine. While the exact timing and context of this quote remain unclear, reports widely attribute a statement to Hopkins expressing, she was the most obnoxious actress I have ever worked with. Unfortunately, Hopkins didn't delve into the specific details or incidents that fueled his characterization of McLean as obnoxious. McLean confirmed that she disliked him too. In a 2014 interview with the New York Post, Shirley McLean addressed Anthony Hopkins's previous statement about their working relationship on A Change of Seasons. In response to Hopkins's characterization of her as the most obnoxious actress, McLean candidly remarked, I didn't like him either, but he was on the wagon at that time and it was hard on him. Here, McLean alludes to Hopkins' well documented struggles with alcohol. At the time of filming A Change of Seasons, Hopkins had recently achieved sobriety, marking five years without alcohol. Opening up about his journey to recovery, Hopkins shared with the Sunday Times magazine, I haven't drunk since, and nor have I felt the urge to. When I asked for help and I realized I wasn't alone, that there were thousands of people like me, all my fears began to dissolve. This revelation adds a layer of understanding to the dynamics between McLean and Hopkins during the making of the film. It suggests that external factors, such as Hopkins' commitment to sobriety, may have influenced the working atmosphere and contributed to the tensions between the two actors. Both actors have strong personalities. The clash between Shirley MacLaine and Anthony Hopkins during the filming of A Change of Seasons may have been attributed to their distinct personalities. Hopkins has openly discussed grappling with an inherent anger, describing it as a potent force that he has learned to channel. In a 2018 interview with The Guardian, he shared, I'm very happy I'm an alcoholic. It's a great gift because wherever I go, the abyss follows me. It's a volcanic anger you have, and it's fuel, rocket fuel. Hopkins acknowledged the transformative power of this anger over the years, emphasizing the importance of not being a people pleaser and adopting a live and let live philosophy. He mentioned that as he stopped offering opinions and avoided arguments, the anger began to evolve into a driving force. Conversely, Shirley MacLaine is known for her candidness and assertiveness in standing up for her beliefs. While being forthright and truthful, she doesn't shy away from expressing her opinions. In a 2020 interview with Variety, MacLaine clarified, Even though I tell people the truth, I'm not a diva. In spite of the challenges and clashes they faced during a change of seasons, both Shirley MacLaine and Anthony Hopkins went on to have remarkably successful acting careers. Their enduring talent and ability to captivate audiences allowed them to navigate the complexities of the entertainment industry and continue to contribute to the world of cinema. Shirley MacLaine's reputation for being a dynamic and sometimes challenging personality on set is balanced by instances where she was a delight to work with. Actor John Forsyth, who collaborated with her in The Trouble with Harry, found joy in their collaboration, and Jack Black shared positive experiences working alongside her in the film Bernie. While McLean's career has seen its share of ups and downs in terms of interpersonal dynamics, her undeniable talents have played a pivotal role in sustaining her success over the years. It's a testament to her resilience and commitment to her craft that she has remained a prominent figure in the film industry. Before concluding, Let's delve into one more incident that highlights the clash-prone nature of Shirley MacLaine's career, adding another layer to the rich tapestry of her experiences in the world of entertainment. Drama on set. When Shirley MacLaine and Deborah Winger joined forces to bring Larry McMurtry's sentimental bestseller to life in terms of endearment, their initial meeting didn't spark an immediate connection. McLean, a seasoned Hollywood veteran boasting three Oscar nominations, found herself paired with Winger, a rapidly rising star following her role in 1980's Urban Cowboy. Beyond their shared talent, the two actresses appeared to have little in common. I didn't know the name, admitted McLean about Winger in a 1984 interview with People. I didn't know who she was. The first introduction set an apprehensive tone. 
Director-screenwriter James L. Brooks recalled, We were all nervous. McLean, attempting to understand her character's feelings, adorned herself in leftover movie star fur coats, while Winger, rebellious and provocative, sported combat boots and a miniskirt. McLean's initial reaction was one of surprise. Oh my goodness. This initial clash in styles and personalities would go on to set the stage for on-set clashes between the two actresses. Winger's rebellious spirit and provocative demeanor clashed with McLean's more reserved approach, creating an interesting dynamic during the filming of Terms of Endearment. James L. Brooks, the director-screenwriter of Terms of Endearment, noted that no one can get a fix on the relationship between Shirley MacLaine and Deborah Winger, including the participants themselves. Despite the challenges off-screen, their dynamic translated into a bracingly complex mother-daughter bond on-screen. We knew what we were doing a lot of the time, sparring back and forth, Winger recalled. This gritty approach to working left some at Paramount thinking they were crazy. The tension between the two actresses reached a point where Winger's demanding behavior did not sit well with McLean. In her 1995 autobiography, My Lucky Stars, McLean revealed that Winger would yell at her to get over here when it was time to hit her marks on set. Amid the challenges and clashes on the set of Terms of Endearment, an incident recounted by Shirley MacLaine in her autobiography adds a unique and humorous perspective to the strained relationship. MacLaine detailed an instance when Deborah Winger, in response to being asked to hit her marks on set, turned around, lifted her skirt, looked over her shoulder, bent over, and humorously added a surprising twist to the situation. I heard you, I said. I know marks when I see them, MacLaine wrote in her book. Good, Winger said. How's this for a mark? Despite the tensions and occasional confrontations, Winger acknowledged their challenging dynamic, stating, We challenged ourselves, and when we got tired of challenging ourselves, we challenged each other. But I think there was always respect between the two of us. Decades after their collaboration on terms of endearment, the enduring tension between Deborah Winger and Shirley MacLaine continues to capture attention. In a recent appearance on Bravo's talk show, hosted by Andy Cohen, Winger, now 63, firmly addressed questions about her relationship with the 84-year-old McLean, who portrayed her mother in the acclaimed 1983 film. When Cohen suggested that Winger had discussed McLean in her 2008 book, Undiscovered, Winger promptly corrected him, stating, No, I didn't write about her. She wrote about me. Emphasizing the need for accuracy in the portrayal of their dynamic, Winger urged for clarity, stating, Let's try to get something straight. I mean, come on. Despite Deborah Winger's reluctance to delve into the specifics of her relationship with Shirley MacLaine, host Andy Cohen pressed on, addressing long-standing rumors about their on-set dynamics. Cohen inquired about rumors, including alleged attempts to pass gas in McLean's direction and lick her leg during a love scene with Jack Nicholson. Maintaining a smile, Winger acknowledged that there was something true in there, hinting at the complexities of their interactions. The interview provided a glimpse into the tumultuous dynamic between the two actresses during the filming of Terms of Endearment, a relationship that echoed the on-screen fireworks between their characters. Emma Greenway and her cantankerous mother, Aurora. Both Winger and McLean received Best Actress Academy Award nominations for their performances, with McLean ultimately securing the statuette. During her memorable acceptance speech, McLean declared, I deserve this. A part of Hollywood lore. In the years following their intense collaboration on Terms of Endearment, both Deborah Winger and Shirley MacLaine have continued their respective careers, leaving behind the echoes of their behind-the-scenes conflicts. However, the fascination with their on-set battles, reminiscent of legendary clashes like those between Bette Davis and Joan Crawford, has persisted among fans and interviewers like Andy Cohen.
While discussing the movie's enduring legacy, Winger shared in a 2017 interview with Entertainment Weekly that she always believed the film was great, expressing indifference towards the squabbles that fueled the intense dynamic between the two actresses. Despite the challenges, it's undeniable that their collaboration resulted in some of their most compelling work, adding to the lore of Hollywood legends and their epic clashes. Deborah Winger has been candid about the challenges she faced regarding the enduring narrative of her feud with Shirley MacLaine during the filming of Terms of Endearment. Despite the difficulties, she acknowledged that the feud did generate considerable media attention, acknowledging that it made for great ink. Winger reflected on the persistent nature of Hollywood narratives, emphasizing that comments made in one interview could shape public perception for a lifetime. Heeding the advice of her Terms of Endearment co-star Jack Nicholson, Winger revealed that she chose not to deny reports about her clashes with McLean. In Nicholson's words, she recalled, Don't deny anything, because if you deny one thing, the first thing you don't deny is automatically true. Shirley MacLaine's illustrious career has been marked by both successes and clashes with co-stars. Despite the challenges she faced while working with certain individuals, her legacy in the entertainment industry remains strong. Notably, McLean continues to contribute to the film industry, with at least two projects currently in production. As fans of Shirley McLean, it's fascinating to consider the highs and lows of her remarkable life and career. The dynamics and conflicts on movie sets are not uncommon, even among the most celebrated actors. It raises the question, can clashes on sets today potentially jeopardize an actor's career, or do they merely generate publicity without impacting their long-term success? Share your thoughts in the comments section on Shirley MacLaine, her experiences with co-stars, and your perspective on whether on-set clashes contribute to an actor's career trajectory or serve as mere publicity in the grand scheme of their longevity in the industry. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our upcoming content. See you next time. Bye.